Hello snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host Avery Lefebvre and in this video we're going to review the Switchback Heldor Pro binding. That's right, Heldor Helgeson's Pro Model binding complete with its little wing. I rode these bindings on my Arbor Westmark rocker at Copper Mountain on a spring day that was a little bit of bluebird, clouds, there was high visibility, the snow was slushy to firm and fast, the corduroy was super firm and fast, and I used my K2 Thraxxus boots. If there was ever a binding that had too much adjustability, this is it. Toe ramp, heel ramp, high back, strap placement, you've got just about every variation of adjustability with this thing. And it's also a one size fits all binding, which means you can pretty much take it apart and put it back together, which I did. That was really frustrating, but you know, it's toolless, which I still don't understand why I was hitting it with a hammer to get some stuff out, but whatever, doesn't really matter. So the heel strap is the older switchback heel strap, which isn't that new injected one that they're doing. So it's the sewn together one and out the box, it felt rigid. I know it'll break in over time and there'll be a little bit of stretching. The toe strap, it didn't really conform to my boot shape and it didn't look like it would conform to most other ones, but it might have just needed to break in a little bit more than for how long I used it. I mean, it did grip fairly well and so there was that. The, the heel strap conformed over the instep of my foot around the ankle. It locked me down. It did its job. Didn't have any issues with the ratchets. They did their job. They climbed well. They locked in. They stayed locked in. They didn't release unless I wanted them to. The one finger quick release was nice. It, I was able to engage it and just release as needed. It did what I wanted. Let's talk about the high backs. Fuck these things. First off, when they're up, they lock and they stay locked. So you have to kick them hard to get them down when you're getting on the chair because if it's low swinging, it's just gonna snap them off. And if you kick them hard enough, they might actually pop out of the track. Happened to me once. I've seen it happen with to other people numerous times. And then let's talk about the flex of it. It's just rigid. I couldn't believe how rigid the high back was. There was just no give to it. And that wing on the outside, because I ride a triple boa boot and that knob is on the outside, the wing pushes right on the knob, which means you're putting a push point right into your boot. I could actually feel it on the outside of my leg on both bindings. It wouldn't have mattered if I would flipped the high back so that the wing was on the inside because it's triple boa and I've got a boa knob on the inside. So if you're a dual boa rider, be aware of that. I mean, overall, really wasn't too impressed with the high back on this. So I figured with this being Heldor's binding, it would be a little more soft or flexible. Nope, this thing is actually stiff. It's rigid, it feels like a low end free ride binding. There's not a lot of give to it. So that construction that it has with the composite base and the metal heel cup, it really feels rigid. Like you could push into this binding and not get much lateral flex. And it takes up a huge portion of the board. Like you can, you can really feel that it just kind of deadens everything under foot. Overall, I would ride a free ride board with this binding and not a freestyle board. And it's just, it's, it's stiffer, it, it was weird. Overall, the ride of this binding is very rigid and stiff. There's a lot of power in this binding. You can feel that transmission going from edge to edge on the board. You really just push into this binding, which is surprising because it's Heldor's binding. I mean, figured it would be a little more loose, but I mean, he does hit big shit, but still figured it would be a little more loose. So who's this binding for? Obviously, Heldor Helgeson or his fanboys, people that just adore him will buy this. I guarantee his name actually sells this binding. When you find yourself screaming at a binding to adjust it, you know there's an issue. When you have to take a hammer to loosen parts on it when it's toolless, you know there's an issue. I get what they're trying to do. It reduces mold cost by making it one size fits all, but this thing was a fucking bitch to adjust. It just sucked to have to take the full thing apart and then put it back together just to adjust it. Yeah, it's toolless, but you still find that it's not that easy to adjust. The older ones were easier to adjust with that unibody construction and they had their issues. Switchback, I still kind of just don't understand how they're still in business because there are so many better bindings out on the market. 
And the flex, why was it so rigid? I just don't get it. It just made the board feel more rigid and it was just like a deader flex underfoot. This has been my review of the Switchback Heldor Helgeson Pro binding. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? You're probably going to disagree with it and everyone's going to call me a hater for this review. Do you own them? Are you going to buy them? Leave me a comment down below. I can't wait to see how this goes. And if you're new here and not pissed off at this review, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. If you'd really like to support us and you want to see us grow out our content offering and the network that we're trying to build, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. It's the best way to support us in everything that we do. I could tell you more here, but I've got a video over there. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.